William T.J. Martin, 1819 to 1868. So, uh, so he developed an anesthesia method uh, in surgery operations. Uh, so you don't feel any pain in surgery operation nowadays. Uh, so who wants to read the first paragraph until here? You can also have uh, temporary anesthesia uh, where your body momentarily don't feel pain, but then it catches up, you know. Uh -huh. Yeah. All right, I'll, I'll read the first one, I guess. Okay. Uh, the name of William Thompson Green Morton may not ring a bell in the minds of most readers. He was, however, a far more influential person than many more famous men, for Morton was the man principally responsible for the introduction of the use of anesthesia in surgery. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So let's review the name of William Thomas Green Martin may not ring a bell in the minds of most readers, right? May not ring a bell, right? It's kind of self-explanatory, like mm, you can say what um, may not uh, re remember exactly what it is, right? It's like that. The name of William Thomas Green may not remember, uh, may not remember you like uh, or may mm -hmm. not remember in minds of most readers like yeah that does like, not register or doesn't come to mind yeah yeah it not yeah may not remind you you know it's like uh, yeah he was however a far most influential person than many more famous men for martin was the man principally responsible for the introduction of the use of anesthesia in surgery principally importantly right uh, or you can say mm, like mainly mainly chiefly mm -hmm. and okay yeah uh, all obvious right for martin was the man mainly responsible for the introduction of the use of anesthesia in surgery so anesthesia again uh, wait why why the spelling is different you see yeah, you can have an extra A. It's um, uh -huh. it's left over from Latin or something. Uh -huh. I guess it's because it's uh -huh. in US. It's like this. Yeah, in the US, yeah. you see, it's like uh -huh. okay. So and again, anesthesia is a state in which someone doesn't feel pain, usually because of drugs they have been given, or in medical, the quality of being unable to feel heat, cold, pain, touch, etc. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that you don't feel heat also. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, your, your nerves are not sending signals mm -hmm. properly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, again, if anyone has any question, I'm skipping some words. Just stop me. Uh, so who wants to read the next paragraph until here? I can. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, few inventions in all of history are so highly valued by individual human beings as anesthetics, and few have made as profound a difference in the human condition. The grimness of surgery in the days when a patient had to be awake while a surgeon sawed through his bones is frightful to contemplate. The ability to put an end to this kind of pain is certainly one of the greatest gifts that any man ever gave to his fellows. Mm -hmm. Thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, you see, native speaker, certainly, right? Not certainly, right? Certainly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, like important, like mountain, right? Few, I mean, American <laughs> accent, for sure. So let's review a few inventions in all of history are so highly valued by individual human beings as anesthetics. I guess it's like uh, anesthetics, right? It's like that. Anesthetics. Uh, I say uh, a soft T sound. Uh, so this is uh, this is a bit different. Anesthetic, but that mm. one is anesthesia. So it's E, but this is A. So it's interesting. Mm. So anesthetic is substance that makes you unable to feel pain. Mm -hmm. For example, the operation is performed on, under anesthetic. Mm -hmm. So anesthesia, but anesthetic. So uh, for mm, go ahead. It's also very it's also very important to uh, remember that this is not the opposite or the negative of aesthetics. So just uh -huh. put that in your mind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Aesthetic, yeah, I aesthetics. guess, it's like 
very yeah, beauty and stuff yeah beauty. pleasing mm-hmm. visual mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. exactly so few invention in all of history are so highly valued by individual human beings and and aesthetics and few have made as profound a difference in human condition as profound a difference as deep a, a difference in human condition the grimness profound right it means deep profoundly deeply we had this one a lot the grimness of surgery in the days when a patient had to be awake while surgeon saw through his bones in frightful to com- uh, contemplate so here the grimness uh, you can say like you know grim grimness darkness it's like how to explain um, grimness of surgery it's like it's the feeling of having no hope this is better mm-hmm. for example i make a comment today about the grimness of our outlook or our perspective is there another yeah, like definitely? being bleak uh uh-huh. yeah bleak you mean uh, this one uh like this no bleak uh yeah uh uh okay uh uh yeah yeah if a place is bleak it's empty and not welcoming or attractive Mm -hmm. yep the house stands on a bleak wind-swept hilltop okay it's just another one down there wind-swept i guess uh sorry what in any like this yeah seriousness and determination also hmm, interesting for example she noticed the grimness about his mouth or there was a brisk grimness in the way he spoke okay seriousness hmm. it is also yeah. common to speak of grim determination those two words together are common uh-huh. yeah okay. yeah and you, you you just saw the the third definition which is the one that was most applicable here uh-huh the, this one uh, something ugly or no uh-huh. yeah that Being one ugly, not enjoyable yeah uh-huh. and that's the one of unrelenting grimness or the years had not tamed the wildness or softened the grimness or her appearance mm. yeah nobody enjoyed their legs being sawn off mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> okay so the grimness or the state of having no hope of surgery in the days when a patient had to be awake while surgeon saw through his bones in frightful to contemplate and this one is like um, it's like uh, saw yeah. right saw you all know right. uh, it's a device you can see it's a tool not a device uh, let me show you yes uh, sharp sharp teeth and then you go zigzag you go back and forth mm-hmm. these are so exactly mm-hmm. yeah and but here is the verb uh not and also past tense of c you all know but yeah as a verb to cut wood or other hard material using a saw right mm, in this case bone mm-hmm. in this case bones yep yeah so there's the such grimness, a thing as a bone saw mm-hmm. yep and here frightful to contemplate means to consider thoughtfully right it's like mm. but maybe contemplate has a different meaning here Oh, it's just too much to like bear. It's frightful to even think about. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Think about yeah in a frightful way, right? Yeah. To Unimagin- think about considering possible future action. Mm-hmm. Or Unimaginable. To one. Mm-hmm. But uh, here is the verb. Yeah. Or to consider one particular thing for a long time in a serious and quiet way. I'm contemplating going abroad for a year. It's like I'm considering thoughtfully, like that. Uh. Yeah okay so the grimness of the surgery in the days when a patient had to be awake while a surgeon saw through his bones is frightful to contemplate it's frightful even to imagine to consider that it's like that the ability to put an end to this kind of pain is certainly one of the greatest gifts that any man ever gave to his fellows mm-hmm. Okay. Mm. Who wants to read the next paragraph? Uh, until here. We got our usual readers online. Uh, let's wait for them to volunteer. Yeah, uh, ULF, hey, ULF, do you want to read? Oh, okay, up to you. Pick one uh, of you guys. Yeah, I'm here, ULF. Yeah. Okay, go okay. ahead, go ahead. 
Martin was born in 1819 in Charlton, Massachusetts as a young man. He studied at the Baltimore College of Dental Surgery. In 1842, he began the practice of den den this uh, I, mean, uh, I, I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, full stops mean full stop. You have to stop. Uh, the period at the end of the sentence means you have to pause. Uh huh. Where the surgery? No, every like every time there's a point. Yeah. yeah, it's like uh, just your intonation. He points as your intonation. Uh -huh. It's like yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh huh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Again, in 1842, yeah. he began the pra practice of dentistry for a while in 1842 and 1843 he was the partner of Horace Wells a slightly older dentist who was self interested in anesthesia anesthesia was the pronunciation yeah mm -hmm. anesthesia, mm -hmm. anesthesia. Mm -hmm. it seems however that their partnership was not profitable and and it ended in late 18. Mm -hmm. Thank you, I appreciate it. So let's review. Martin was born in 1819 in Charlton, Massachusetts. As a young man, he studied at the Baltimore College of Dental Surgery in 1842. He began the practice of dentistry, I guess. So dentistry uh, or dentistry, you all know. Is the practice is the uh, work of uh, a dentist, right? Dentistry. So uh, again, he studied at the Baltimore College of Dental Surgery in 1842. He began the practice of dentistry for a while in 1842 and 1843. He was the partner of Horace Wells, I guess, a slightly older dentist who was himself interested in anesthesia. It seems, however, that their partnership was not profitable and it ended in late 1843. Okay. That's uh, a year. Of, mm -hmm, yeah. Uh, so who wants to read? Uh, I, I can. Guess this is short. Yeah, go ahead until here. Wow. Yeah, thank you. A year later, Wills began experimenting with nitrous oxide, loafing gas as an anesthetic. He was able to use it effectively in his dental practice in Hartford, Connecticut, uh, in Connecticut. Unfortunately, however, public demonstration that he attempted in Boston was unsuccessful. In his own dental practice, Morton specialized in fitting people for artificial teeth. To this properly, it was necessary to extract the roots of the old teeth first. Such extraction in the days before anesthesia was extremely painful and the, dese and the desirability of some means of anesthesia was apparent. Martin correctly judged that nitrous oxide wouldn't be sufficiently effective for these purposes and he searched for a more powerful agent. Mm -hmm. Thank you, I appreciate it. You're just, uh, again, uh, your getting hoarse uh, in terms of pronunciation, just uh, pronounce the words a little, I mean, each letter, try to pronounce them, uh, you know, very clear, you know, necessary. necessary. Yeah, if you want to get better at pronunciation, it's like, I hear you, it's like your tongue is kind of lazy, it's like, don't pronounce some words, you know, it's like mm -hmm. some letters, it's like, yeah. Sometimes okay. you should, yeah, it's like, mm -hmm. or, or the, another one, mm -hmm, go ahead. With the, near the, at the last sentence, near the end, searched, mm -hmm. um, the mm -hmm. ED endings have a kind of irregular pronunciation. After the CH sound, you want to make a T sound, not searched, uh -huh. but rather searched. Searched, yeah, this E, yeah. Uh, this e is silent, exactly, mm -hmm. searched. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and here, for example, another one, this is teeth, right, teeth, uh, yeah, this th again, uh, you should work on it, yeah. Okay, thank you, I appreciate it. So let's tell you, a, la a year later, Wells began, sorry, Wells began experimenting with nitrous oxide, I guess, I don't know this one, it's like mm, nitrous? Yeah, or nitrous what? oxide. Uh -huh. So what kind of gas on uh, nitrous oxide? 
oxide. A gas with a faint sweet smell that can be breathed in with oxygen to reduce pain, for example, during childbirth or medical examinations. Uh -huh. So nitrous oxide, okay. I don't know if there's an image or something. Hmm. Okay, you are used most likely in for anesthesia. Okay. There you so, see it's also used recreationally. Um, those are the small capsules. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, a year later, Wells began experimenting with nitrous oxide, laughing gas, hmm. as an anesthetic. La why, why it's like laughing gas? It's like it makes you, uh, I mean, laugh. That's what, like, uh, T that's what T.O. was trying to tell you. Uh, people do use it recreationally, meaning they take drugs, like they get uh -huh. them, they take some weed, then afterwards they take some laughing gas, they mix it up together, they get an extra high, and you know, it's more fun uh -huh. or something. Hmm. Okay. Yep. He was able to use it effectively in his dental practice in Hartford this place. Unfortunately, however, a public demonstration that he attempted in Boston was unsuccessful in his own dental practice. Martin specialized in feeding people for artificial teeth to, to do this properly or accurately or uh, in a... Uh, what, what can you say properly? It's like uh, accurately, properly. right? Yeah, probably correctly. Say, yeah, correctly, satisfactorily, you can say. To do this properly, it was necessary to extract the roots of the old trees first. So extract, uh, bring them, you know, it's like, uh, Pull take them, them out. remove them, take it, them out, it's like that. So extract the roots of the old trees first. Such so extraction in the days before anesthesia was extremely painful and that Desirability of some means of anesthesia was apparent, was obvious. Uh, Alex, Martin, I don't know. Go, go I don't ahead. know what it is, um, because I'm a bit tired. But it's something about your pronunciation. Can you go back to to do this properly? It was. Uh, it was the second was, line. Yeah, it was necessary yeah. to. Uh, yeah, necessary. there. Uh, this one, right? Yeah. It was necessary, right? Necessary, mm. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I haven't reviewed this for I added to Anki, but I haven't reviewed. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. The stress uh, is on N, it, but for it, ten it, years it, I was uh, I was putting the stress on this part. Yeah. yeah. We we can blame your professors for that. Uh in the same second line, artificial, but you said artificial or something. Artificial. Uh -huh. Again, this one artificial, not yeah. artificial. Uh -huh. How how would yeah. you guys pronounce it? I guess it's, uh, you're right. Let, let's see. The artificial. Yeah, artificial. artificial. Yeah, yeah. The, the primary stress you see is like artificial, artificial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So again, in his own dental practice, Martin is specialized in feeding people for artificial teeth. To do this properly, it was necessary to track the necessary. roots. Necessary. Necessary, sorry, is, again. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's going to be to a do tough this one. properly. It was necessary to extract the roots of the old trees first. Such extraction in the days before anesthesia was extremely painful, and the desirability of some means of anesthesia was obvious. Martin correctly judged that nitrous oxide would not be sufficiently or would not be uh, enough effective for his uh, purposes and he searched for a more powerful agent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and Connecticut is Connecticut. You, you, I mean, if you migrate there, you have to pronounce it. One day, they, you got a colleague that comes from Connecticut, and you can't, you can't even say his state. You know? uh, which one? Connecticut, you know, that's where it's from. Connecticut. Uh, I didn't catch that, Alex. What, what do you mean? La, last paragraph. Uh, Last paragraph, what do you mean? Yeah, see that in Hartford, he's from. Keep going. Wait. Uh, keep yeah, going. So... No, no, Where? go up. Okay. Oh, this yeah, one, see, Connecticut. Yeah. Uh -huh, okay, sorry, sorry. Uh -huh. it's, it's a city, right? It's like. It's a whole state. Or... Uh -huh, it's a whole state. Okay, I don't know. Connecticut. Okay. Yeah, I think it's next to Tennessee, if I'm wrong. Am I, am I wrong? Uh -huh. Okay. 
Your names doesn't matter that much. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> so yeah, okay, uh, oh. name doesn't matter except states because one day you have someone that come from that state and he's proud of coming uh, where he's coming come from. You know. Uh, okay. Hmm. So who wants to read the next paragraph until here? You can. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Charles T. Jackson, a learned doctor and scientist whom Martin knew, suggested that he try using ether. That ether was anesthetic properties that has been discovered more than 300 years earlier by Paracelsus, a famous Swiss physician and alchemist. One or two similar reports ha had also been printed during the first part of the 19th century. But neither Jackson nor any of the persons who have written about Edder have ever used the chemical in the surgical operation. Okay. Oh, okay, thank you. I appreciate it. I guess this, this is ether, right? Ether. Yeah. Let's check yeah. this. Oh, okay, thank uh, you. Yeah, ether. Oh, okay. It clearly yes. could use, especially in the past, as an anesthetic to make people sleep before a medical operation. Mm -hmm. Ether. I don't know if there's any image. Uh, uh, this and, is the formula uh -huh, in chemistry. And for alchemy, you pronounce it uh, in the like kind of Middle Eastern. You said al alchemy. Yeah, yeah it's al oh. alchemy, right? So alchemist, alchemy, alchemy. Uh, 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 yeah, that one. And then we got yeah, alchemist, properties. Yeah. I heard pro pro properties or something. Uh, pro pro mm -hmm. pro properties, something mm -hmm. like that. It's property. Uh, so one, it's, uh, uh, properties. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Try to stress the first syllable. Prop properties. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so thank you. So let's review Charles T. Jackson, a learned doctor and scientist who Martin knew suggested that he try using ether. That ether has anesthetic properties had been discovered more than 300 years earlier by this person a famous Swiss physician or doctor and alchemist, right? I guess this Alchemist, see. yeah. Mm -hmm. Alchemist, mm -hmm. a person who uses, uses or seems to use alchemy. And alchemy is attempts to change ordinary metals into gold. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay, for example, for thousands of years, alchemists tried to figure out how to turn lead into gold. Mm -hmm. And okay. that's lead when lead? it's the metal wait. it's lead yeah when uh -huh. it's uh the when it's an op the... when, yeah wait when it's uh -huh. when, when is the a... verb uh -huh. means to control is lead uh -huh. i didn't know right. that but as a noun yeah. let's see you can also it, it can be a noun too where you tie it to a cow or a horse that's a lead as well um wait. it has to be the metal see so for animals see lead that's to that's also lead but then when it's when you it says bracket metal like the uh -huh, one that uh -huh, PD, yeah a metal a lead. chemical element mm -hmm, lead good point mm -hmm. a chemical yeah. element that is very heavy soft dark gray poisonous metal used especially in the past on roofs and for pipes and also for protection against radiation mm -hmm. lead pipes mm -hmm. yeah i can show you i guess uh, i know this one yeah this one mm -hmm, exactly yeah we had in chemistry, uh, PB82. Plumbum. Okay. So a famous Swiss physician and alchemist, one or two similar reports had also been printed during the first part of the 19th century, but neither Jackson nor any of the persons who had written about ether had ever used the chemical in a surgical operation mm -hmm. okay i just want to point out that you know alchemy and algebra they were all borrowed from the golden age of the middle east so yeah it's it's mm -hmm. not it's not a bad thing that they mispronounced it because it is their word uh -huh. we borrowed it mm -hmm. okay so who wants to read the next paragraph until here starting from here and decap bunny uh, sure, sure. Yeah. So, how do you pronounce the word, the first word again? Ether. Ether. Okay. Ether sounded like a promising possibility to Morton, and he experimented with it. 
first on animals, including his pet dog, and then on himself. Finally, on September 30, 1846, a perfect opportunity arose for, for testing ether on a patient. A man named Eben Frost walked into Morton's office with a terrible toothache and the willingness to try anything which might relieve the pain of the necessary extraction. Morton administered ether to him and then pulled his tooth. When Frost regained consciousness, he reported that he had felt no pain. A better result would, uh, could hardly have been hoped for. And Morton could see success, fame, and fortune in front of him. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I appreciate it. So let's review. Um, just just one small reminder. Uh, September 30th. 30th. Mm, 30th. Not 30th. Mm -hmm. yeah. And also if, September uh, 30th. Yeah. Better it, so, so if 30 is in front, wait. Yeah, September the, the yeah, correct. The third years, mm -hmm, yeah. Uh, if it's uh, in before September, it's like uh, then on, on the, the September, th yeah. yeah, on, on the, the third years of, of September. September. Of September. Yeah. Exactly. So the so the and off is not printed out. It's not written, but you have to read it out because mm -hmm. the listener cannot see what you read. You know, they they only can hear you. So in English, when you speak English. You say on the thirtieth of September, but when you print it out, they don't. They, they get lazy, right? They mm -hmm. they cut off the the and the off. You know. Yeah, exactly. For example, September the first, September the second, and the September the third. Yes, exactly. So let's yeah, September you... the fifteenth, August the third, twenty third. You have to say mm -hmm. it like that. Mm -hmm. Or if it was the first on the second of September, it's like that. Mm -hmm. Ether sounded like a promising possibility to Martin, and he experimented with it. First on animals, including his pet dog, and then on himself. Finally, on September the 30th, 1846, a perfect opportunity arose for testing ether on a patient. Arose, past tense of arise, awakened, you can say. Arose for testing ether on a patient. A man named Eben Frost walked into Martin's office with a terrible toothache and a willingness to try anything which might relieve the pain of the, necess the necessary, necessary extraction. Martin administrated ether to him. So, administrated, applied, or used, right? Uh, I guess it should be given. Given is enough. Given, gave. Uh -huh. <clears throat> so let's see, you all know uh, administer as a noun, but as a verb to control the operation or arrangement of something uh -huh. or to govern. Yeah, administer is kind of control, but let me see. Um, uh -huh, this one to give, mm -hmm. to cause someone to receive something, to administer medicine. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. All right. Okay. So Martin administrator gave ether to him and then pulled his tooth. When Frost regained consciousness, wait, it's like cons consciousness, sorry, con regain consciousness means, you know, the state of being conscious. Sorry, I kind of confused with consciousness. So consciousness, right, consciousness, the state of understanding and realizing something, right? We have conscious as an adjective, Right to notice that a particular thing or person exists or is present, we have unconscious in the state of not being awake and not aware of things around you. It's like that. But here, consciousness is the noun. So when Frost regained, excuse me for the uh, first uh, definition. The first connotation is not the one used here of of uh, understanding. Uh, there should be another definition uh, if you scroll you down. Mean, uh, let me see. From being consciousness. Awake, right? Being aware. Yes, right? there you yeah, go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not <clears throat> kind of similar, but yeah, you're right. This is better. Instead of being awake, thinking, and knowing what is happening around you. For example, he lost consciousness after his accident and never recovered or never regained it. Okay. So. When Frost regained consciousness, he reported that he had felt no pain 
a better result could hardly or could barely have been hoped for, and Martin could see success, fame, or reputation, and fortune in front of him. Okay, interesting. Fame is the noun for being famous. So, okay, um, again, if anyone has any question, just stop me and ask. So, who wants to read the next paragraph until here, starting from here? I guess, uh, Almila, do you want to read or not? Um, I can try, but... <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. thank you. Okay. Um, although the operation had been witnessed, witnessed and was reported in Boston newspapers the next day, it did not attract widespread attention. Clearly, a more dramatic demonstration was needed. Martin therefore asked Dr. John C. Warren, senior surgeon at Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston, for an opportunity to give a practical demonstration before a group of doctors of his method of preventing pain. Dr. Warren agreed and a demonstration was scheduled at the hospital there on October the um, 16th 1846, before a cons cons considerable audience of doctors and medical students, Morton administrated either to a surgical patient, Gil Gilbert Abbott, and Dr. Ver Warren then removed a how to, to, to tumor. tumor from Abbott's neck. The anesthetic provo provoked, proved <laughs> completely effective and the demonstration was an overwhelming success. That dem demonstration, which was promptly reported in many newspapers, was directly responsible for the widespread use of anesthetics in surgical operations over the course of the next few years. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, I appreciate it. Actually, actually pretty good. Um, mm -hmm. On the fourth line, I, I love the uh, senior becomes senior because <laughs> it becomes Spanish suddenly. But it's not Mr. <laughs> surgeon, right? It's a it's an el elder surgeon. So we go back to senior, not sen senior. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's funny to me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and this is a scheduled, right? I hear it like it's chair, but it's care, right? It's care. This H is silent, right? scheduled and um, yeah mm, it was so good but your th pronunciation should work on that for example october 16th right 16th the, the 16th mm -hmm. yeah, your th pronunciation okay uh, overall it was pretty good so let's review although yeah you saved yourself many times mm -hmm. although the operation had been witnessed or uh has been uh, seen for the first time and was reported in Boston newspaper the next day, it didn't attract widespread attention or, or universal attention or large, a lot of uh, widespread, I guess universal, but it, it, it's not always universal, you know, it's like... Um, you can just say a, a lot of, you know. Yeah, a lot of attention. <laughs> Clearly, a more dramatic demonstration was needed. Demonstration, again, you um, can say, uh, here is different. Uh, it's not that like a march or a parade or something. Uh, an, act of, an act of proving, yeah. Uh, demonstrating something, showing something, presenting something. Mm -hmm. Clearly, a more dramatic demonstration was needed. And therefore, as Dr. John Steve Warren, senior surgeon at Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston. Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston for an opportunity to give a practical demonstration before a group of doctors of his method of preventing pain. Practical, experimental. Uh, Dr. Warren agreed and a demonstration was scheduled at the hospital. There, on the October, uh, sorry, on October the 16th, 1846, before a considerable audience of doctors and medical students, Martin administered, uh, sorry, administered 
ether to a surgical patient again mr gave yeah that, that's the one you you have trouble with uh not you uh what's her name um uh, you said administrate straighted or something yeah uh okay that's okay i'm just pointing it out yeah uh, almila you mean okay so yeah there on october the 16th 1846, before a considerable audience of doctors and medical students, Marlin administered ether to a surgical patient, Gilbert Abbott, I guess. Yeah, Dr. Yeah. Warren, Abbott, okay, Abbott. Dr. Warren then removed a tumor from Abbott's neck. Tumor, you all know, I guess, but let's see. A kind of exactly. growth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of like growth cancer, that's in your, inside but, your body. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A mass of diseased cells. Mm -hmm. This is better. Diseased cells. Mm -hmm. mm. It doesn't have to be cancer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily be cancer. Mm -hmm. It means a cancer, yeah. That might oh. become a lump or cause illness. Mm -hmm. For example, they found a malignant, I guess, tumor in her breast or. Okay, uh, the N is behind tumor. the G, so it becomes malignant. Malignant, oh, okay. Hmm. Yeah, the noun yeah, being malign, malign, oh. M-A-L-I-G-N, and then that's hmm. the, the original root word. Chondroid malign. tumor, right? Oh, uh, is a cancer. Malignant or, means, mm -hmm. yeah, malignant means harmful. And oh. benign means, eh, you can ignore it. It probably won't do anything. Ah, uh -huh. is the tumor malignant or benign? Wow, right. oh, now yeah. I got it. Uh -huh. Now I got it. Hmm. Hmm. Is harmful or it's... it's it's not, not that much, yeah, harmful, mm -hmm. benign. Mm -hmm. uh, Actually, it's not benign. harmful at all. Uh -huh. mm, interesting, yeah. So, okay, mm, and tumor again, for example, a brain tumor. The reason the reason why they need to know whether it's harmful or not is whether you need to do surgery or not. So uh -huh. surgery can harm you, but to justify the surgery, we need to know whether that thing inside your body will harm you more than the surgery. See, uh, so if it's benign, yeah. the doctor or the the surgeon to me might say, you know, we can just ignore it. It's, we will will of course pay attention. You know, what's 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 the word for it? Uh, you know, supervise you until it becomes malignant or something. Then we have to operate. But until then, mm -hmm. if it's not do anything, don't do anything to it. You know, because cutting you open might cause infection and other other secondary problems that the, the mm. surgeon cannot justify, you know, especially if you die from surgery. Yeah, indeed. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Um, Dr. Warren then removed a tumor from Abbott's neck. The anesthetic proved completely effective and the demonstration was an overwhelming success, huge success. That demonstration, which was promptly or immediately reported in many newspapers was directly responsible for the widespread use of anesthetic in surgical operations over the course or over the period of the next few years. So course has a lot of meanings here, means period. Okay, mm, interesting. Im immediately is okay, but quickly or... Uh -huh. Quickly. Yeah. Okay. Because reporters don't do things immediately, you know. They still have to go back and write and then type it out and then, you know. Yeah, immediately is so fast, faster than quickly. Yeah. Yeah, you're kind of right. Yeah. Immediately is like instant messaging. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. even even articles that are clickbait isn't that fast, you know. <laughs> it mm -hmm. takes yeah. one hour, you know. Yeah, yeah quickly and rapidly. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm. yeah, rapidly is okay. pretty good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, who wants to read the next paragraph until here? How about Peter Patter? You haven't read. Okay, maybe not. Can I? Yeah, okay, okay go ahead a little. Several days after the operation about an application for a patent was filed by Morton and Jackson. Although a patent was granted to them the following month, it didn't prevent a series of priority files from arising. Morton's claim that he was entitled the most of the credit for the introduction of anesthesia was contested by a few other persons, particularly by Jackson. Futumor Morton's expectations that his innovation would make him rich was not fulfilled. 
Most doctors and hospitals who made us uh, made use of ether didn't bother to pay any royalties. The costs of litigation and of his struggle for pr priorities on ex um, exceeded the money that Morton received for his inventions. Uh, frustrated and improvised, he did in 1868 in New York City. He wasn't quite 49 years old. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mm. So let's review mm, several days after the operation on Abbott, an application for a patent was filed by Martin and Jackson. Although a patent was granted to them the following month, it didn't prevent a series of uh, priority fights from arising. So patent, you all know, right? It's like a document. Uh, it's like a right. Um, it's like when you want to patent an invention, it's like uh, a right given to you that no one else can uh, register that, uh, that invention again. Uh, it's um, registered or it's assigned to you. It's like that for 25 years, for example, it's like that. Although a patent was granted to them the following month, it didn't prevent a series of priority fights from arising. Martin's claim that he was entitled to most of the credit for the introduction of anesthesia was contested by a few other persons, particularly by Jackson. So here uh, was entitled to most of the credit um, we had this one a lot, like you can say, has <coughs> the right, you're deserving, mm -hmm, was entitled, uh, was deserving the credit here, but it's better. Mm -hmm. But yeah, entitled means having the privilege sometimes. Yeah. So Martin's claim that he was entitled to most of the credit for the introduction of anesthesia was contested by a few other persons, particularly by Jackson. And contested is a verb, means, you know, like mm, challenge challenged, uh, discussed. So you know, contest, contest, right? Contest is a noun, a competition, but as a verb, contest. The stress is on the second syllable, contest. So if you contest a formal statement or a claim or a judge's decisions or a legal case, you say formally that it is wrong or unfair and try to have it changed. For example, we will certainly contest any claims made against the safety of our products. Mm -hmm. So challenge to um, to say for money that is wrong. And also means to compete for something, but not in this case. So Martin claimed that he was entitled to most of credit for the introduction of anesthesia was contested or by or challenged by a few other persons, particularly by Jackson. Furthermore, his own, Mark, uh, mm -hmm, go ahead. His own partner that filed the patent uh, with uh -huh. him. Yeah, exactly, his partner. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, Martin's expectation that his innovation would make him rich was not fulfilled. Fulfilled was not satisfied or, mm -hmm. I guess satisfied is okay. Most doctors and hospitals who made use of ether did not bother to pay any royalties. To pay any royalties here is like mm. when you own when you own the right to something, you and you uh, let's say you write a book. So anyone that buys a copy of a book has to pay uh -huh. you the royalties, right? Uh -huh, it's like a mm, right. Uh, nothing to, to do it. Nothing to do with royal, it just has uh, ancient history, right? But royalties is just another word for fees, right? So if you use uh -huh. my services, you have to pay my fees. If you, but in this in this case, we're talking uh -huh. about intellectual uh, rights, right? So we're talking about inventions, we're talking about copyright, trademark, stuff mm -hmm. like that. If you use things that people produce, you have to pay them a kind of fee, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Because royalty has a lot of meaning. You all know the people right. who belong to the family of a king and queen, and also yeah. kings or queen and their families as a group, or the rank of power of these people. Uh, yeah, but uh, in this case, a payment made to riders. 
people yeah. have invented things, owners of property, etc. Every time their books, devices, land, etc., are bought or used by others. Mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. Yeah, exactly. So is that the payments? So most most doctors and hospitals who made use of ether did not bother to pay any royalties or any payments, um, any monies. The cost of litigation and of his struggle for priority soon exceeded the money that Martin received for his invention. So the cost of litigation is like the process of you know you taking you take legal actions you know taking a case to a court of law so that the judgment can be made. Uh, it's like that. That process is litigation, right? Litigation. And it's in law, it's specialized. For example, the company has consistently denied responsibility, but it agreed to the settlement to avoid the expense of lengthy litigation. Mm -hmm. Settlement here, agreement. So the cost of the costs of litigation and of his struggle for priority soon exceeded the money that Martin received for his invention. Exceeded, uh, you can say, it's like past. It's like uh, you all know, right? It's like um, pa past. I guess is is okay. Past soon past the money uh, past, but. It's okay, but let's see. Let's see what's for the exact meaning. To be greater than number or amount, or to yeah, or to go past an allowed limit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can we see the synonyms? Yeah. Well, Outperform, outstrip. Mm, no. mm. For example, the final cost should not exceed uh, five thousand dollars. You all know it's very common. Out, out, outstrip is yeah. close, but not the correct word. Mm, okay. Yeah, pass or yeah, just. So the cost of litigation and of his struggle for priority soon exceeded the money that Martin received for his invention. First so the traded, sentence means he mm -hmm. basically ran out of money. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah ran out of money for, because of litigation. Because he wanted to uh, prove that he was the first for priority, right? He was the first uh, to... Um, um, pri priority just means first name, right? So if you sometimes see papers, who's in front, right? So who gets the name? Mm -hmm, exactly, proving that he was the first person to uh, invent Anastasia, you can say. Or he should get the most name the, of it. He shouldn't be the second name or the third name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Frustrated and impoverished, he died in 1868 in New York City. So frustrated, you all know, as a synonym, you can say, like, uh, without no hope, you know. It's like that. And impoverished also is very common, like, you know, uh, it's like without any money, enough money. Uh, impoverished mm -hmm. means uh, you're very poor. Mm -hmm. And impoverished is the verb means to make something, someone poor, very poor. For example, the new law is likely to further impoverish single parents. Mm -hmm. Okay. So very poor, frustrated and impoverished, he died in 1868 in New York City. He was not quite 49 years old. Mm. Okay. Just want to clarify with you guys. Um, obviously, everyone has a good idea what a pattern is. They, they, you immediately think invention and you may be correct. However, according to US law, you don't have to be an invention to file a pa pattern. Uh, there's no re such requirement. Instead, when you file a patent, the U.S. Patent Office look at your filing and see if in their database, in their library, is there any such thing that has been filed before? If there is, they have to reject your your application. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah. so that that's it. They, they, they don't care if it's an invention. So that's why there's all these patent trolls, right? There's this one guy, he filed... Um, this exact pattern. He said, uh, my pattern is about a payment method that comes from using a service on a computer from another computer. That's it. And the US Patent Office says, well, this has not been filed before. Your pattern is granted. And now this, this guy, um, he is, um, how to say, he, he, he now, uh, or this company, right, who 
bought the patent is now suing everyone that ever used App Store or Google Play Store, you know, and Google and, and Apple don't do anything about this because it's not their fight, you know. It they this this lawyers, right, they just target small firms that write apps and put it on the App Store. And then they get millions because you just keep suing these small people. You know, so yeah, a patent yeah, is not what some... you think. Yeah. There are some groups I know they I mean they make money just by suing, you know, just by that. <laughs> yeah, they're called uh, patent trolls. And so yeah. so what what a patent ultimately is is not about inventions, it's about it, it gives you an exclusive right over other people for this particular thing. Whatever mm. that thing is. Mm -hmm. You can even patent a gene. Mm. So that's crazy. Mm. Yeah. Okay, um, thank you. So let's uh, continue. Who wants to read uh, the next paragraph until here? Starting from here. The usefulness of anesthesia in dentist, dentistry and in major sur surgery is obvious. In estimating Morton's overall importance, therefore, the main dif difficult is in deciding to what extent Credit for the introduction of anesthesia should be divided between Morton and the various other men involved. The principal other persons to be considered are Horace Wills, Charles Jackson, and Crawford W. Long, a Georgia doctor. On considering the facts, it appears to me that Morton's contribution was far more important than any others than of the others, and I have ranked him accordingly. Mm -hmm. Thank you, appreciate it. Um, just um, yeah, I heard something like this is anesthesia, and there was some other words I kind of forgot. Yo, sorry, like what? What anesthesia? Yeah, the pronunciation Anesth is like anesthesia, anesthesia, anesthesia. anesthesia. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Anesthesia. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, anesthesia. Mm -hmm. Okay, the usefulness of anesthesia in dentistry and major surgery is obvious. In estimating Martin's overall importance, therefore, or estimating, evaluating, right? In estimating Martin's overall importance. Therefore, the main difficulty is in deciding to what extent credit for the introduction of anesthesia should be divided. And this on introduction, I heard something else from you. So, in estimating Martin's overall importance, therefore, the main difficulty is in deciding to what extent credit for the introduction of anesthesia should be divided between Martin and and the other and the various other men uh, involved. The principal other persons to be considered are principal major again. The most important other persons. This person, this person, and this person. Uh, a Georgia doctor or a Georgian should be, I guess it should be a Georgian doctor. Hmm. Strange. Okay. On considering the fact. It appears to me that Martin's contribution was far more important than any of the others, and I have ranked him accordingly, correspondingly. Okay, mm, who wants to read the next paragraph? Uh, until here, starting from here. No one? I'll go for it then. Yep, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It is true enough that Horace Wells had started using anesthesia in his dental practice almost two years before Morton's success, uh, success, successful use of either. But the anesthetic that was used, nitrous oxide, did not and could not have revolutionized surgery. Despite some desirable quantities, uh, qualities, rather, Nitrous oxide is simply not a powerful enough anesthetic to be used alone in major surgery. Surgery. It is useful today when employed in a sophisticated combination with other drugs and also in some dental work. 
Ether, on the other hand, is an am amazingly effective and versatile chemical. Chemical, and it, it it's and it's used in revol revolutionized surgery. In most cases today, uh, a more desirable, uh, more desirable drug or a combination of drugs than either can be found, but for roughly a century after its introduction, either was the anesthetic most usually employed. Despite its disadvantages, it is inflammable and nausea is common after is a common after effect of its use. It is still perhaps the most versatile, uh, versatile single anesthetic ever discovered. It is easy to transport and to administer, and most important of all, combine safety and potency. Mm -hmm. Thank you, appreciate it. So let's see if you... Um... I'll read the next one. Uh -huh, okay, sure. It is true enough that Horace Wells had started using anesthesia in his dental practice almost two years before Martin's successful use of ether. But the anesthetic that Wells used Nitrous oxide did not could did did not and could not have revolutionized surgery. Despite some desirable qualities, nitrous oxide is simply not a powerful enough anesthetic to be used alone in major surgery. It is useful today when employed in a sophisticated combination with other drugs and also in some dental work. Sophisticated combination, a complex uh, com combination. Ether, on the other hand, is an amazingly effective and versatile chemical. Versatile, we had this one, it's like universal, it's like uh, a person that can do anything. It's like uh, different for different purposes, right? Or able to change easily from one activity to another or able to be used for many different purposes, right? Versatile. He's a very versatile young actor who is as happy in high broad dramas as he is in TV comedies. We had this one a lot. So, ether, on the other hand, is an amazingly effective and versatile chemical, right? This chemical is very versatile. You can, uh, it can be used for many different purposes. Uh, we have to be careful with the word universal, because if I'm assuming your country is like my country, there are a lot of business people that like to use the word universal when they don't mean universal. They're just trying to, they, they ran out of words. So they say things mm. like that to sell their product, right? To smooth over a bump, you know? And it's not true in strict English what universal means. You know, so literally means you can use it for anything. So mm, versatile yeah. just means very useful, but not. Not yeah, that. for many different purposes. Yeah, I don't know why I'm saying a lot universal for for the meanings. It's, yeah. It could be your your country. You know, my country is the same. They there are people out there that say things like, "Oh, it's, they want to say multi-purpose, but they couldn't uh -huh. say that word, so they say universal, and they are guilty of making mistakes like that." Yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, multi-purpose. Yeah. So if there, on the other hand, is an amazingly effective and versatile chemical, multi-purpose. And its use revolutionized surgery. So there's an image here. Martin uh, anesthetizes a patient, I guess. Ah, is mm. this the verb? Oh, anesthetize. Yeah. So let's see. Anesthetize. Oh no. Anesthetize. Mm -hmm. Anesthetize. Wow, okay. To give anesthetic. To a person or animal, an anesthetic or a substance or a chemical. Uh, okay, interesting. So, anesthetize. Martin's anesthetizes a patient. Yeah, interesting. Mm. Okay, so here it says in most individual cases today, a more desirable drug or combination of drugs than ether can be found but for roughly a century after its introduction ether was the anesthetic most usually employed or used despite its disadvantages it is still perhaps the most versatile or multi-purpose single anesthetic ever discovered it says also it is inflammable and nausea is common after effect of its use 
So inflammable it, is like it's, it's it not, is from the word flame, but it's uh-huh, inflammable. Yeah. Inflammable, it's inflammable mm, because the, the e disappeared, right? Yeah. Uh, interesting. It, yeah, and and this is the one wow. we know, right? Inflammable mm. is the same as flammable. It's the same thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And flammable substance material burn very easily. Yeah, this in is not a negative prefix. And flammable also, no. yeah, something that is flammable burns easily. The same, exactly. Caution. This solvent, I guess, is highly flammable. I don't know, solvent? It's like solvent? So- mm. Solvent. Solvent. Uh, having enough money to pay? No, not this one. A liquid in which solids will dissolve. Uh-huh. Dissolve, sorry. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, flammable and inflammable is the same. Substance or material burns very easily. A highly inflammable liquid such as petrol. petrol. Okay. Petrol. Mm-hmm. And, okay. Inf- and, but this is flame, right? You all know. Flame, the pronunciation, stream of hot burning gas from something on fire. And wait, in flame is also, hmm, is a very Correct. well. That, uh-huh, that's for increases. your skin. Right. Uh-huh. Hmm. Okay. Cause strong feelings and also a rash on your skin. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah oh. red, painful, and yeah, uh, swollen to become red, painful, and swollen. Mm-hmm. Not rash, okay. yeah, but it becomes, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, interesting. So, yeah. So inflammable means uh, able to burn uh, easily. And the next word here is uh, nausea. Yeah, nausea is like the state of having bad feelings, right? Uh, it's like you, that you want to vom- vomit, right? You want to vomit right. after that. Nausea and nauseous. Uh, you say nausea. Wait, th- this is wrong. This is wrong. Nausea, it says, but actually in American English, it's like nausea. But in the UK, they say nausea, mm-hmm. nausea. It's like nausea, nausea, it's like that in, in British. But in American, nausea, nausea. So the it's, both in American. it's both in American. It's both nausea and nausea. Nausea, oh, okay. Hmm. Could you tell if it's uh, east or west, south or north or anything like that? I'm not sure. I think it is uh-huh. regional, but I'm not sure uh-huh. where. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, Nauseating, it's related to this, I guess. Yeah, yeah? nauseating is related. Mm-hmm. But there's only one pronunciation for that one. There's no nauseating. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. Or not. Yeah, I, I always say so nauseating. Let, let's see. No, yeah, no, no, uh, yeah, it's only yeah, nauseating. But yes, let correct. me check. Um, uh, I have to go to YouTube, so let's move on. Yeah, nauseating. Mm-hmm. Okay. So to cause someone to feel as if they are going to vomit and yeah, the feeling that you're going to vomit and vomit you all know, right? Uh, let me show you an image. I know it's a graphite. It's like this, right? Yeah. So it is inflame, inflammable and nausea is common after effect of its use. It is still perhaps the most versatile single anesthetic ever discovered. It is easy to transport and to administer, to, to give to, to, to the patient. And most important of all, combines safety and potency. Potency is like, mm, kind of um, like, like potential, if, like the noun for potential. So the power. effectiveness of it. Uh, Oh, power, uh-huh. in strength, influence, uh-huh. it's the, the noun for potential, mm-hmm. okay. Uh, strength, influence, or effectiveness. This new drug also, potency is not yet known. Mm-hmm. Also a man's okay. ability of sex. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, potency. So, okay, it's like potency. a power, a strength. Potency. You got it correct, and so, then you start changing it to po- wait, potency. Po- po- yeah. Wait, po- potency. Potency is like that. The the yeah. uh, the series on the first level potency. So and most important of all, combines safety and potency, strength, okay. effectiveness, Crawf- influence. Crawford W. Long, born eighteen fifteen and died eighteen seventy eight, was a Georgian doctor who had used ether in surgical operations as early as eighteen forty two, which was four years before Morton's demonstration. 
However, Long did not publish his results until 1849, which was long after Morton's demonstration had made the usefulness of ether in surgery well known to the medical world. As a result, Long's work benefited only a handful of patients, whereas Morton's work benefited the world at large. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. So this person, born 1815, died 1878, was a Georgian doctor who had used ether in surgical operation as early as 1842, which was four years before Martin's demonstration. However, Long did not long this person did not publish his results until 1849, which was long after Martin's demonstration had made the usefulness of ether in surgery well known to the medical world. As a result, Long's work benefited only a handful of patients. A handful, uh, we had this one, right? A, a, a little, a few, right? Yeah. And let me show you an amount of something that can be held in one hand. It's an amount, it's like, but a few, you can also say uh, a small number of people or thing, a few. So, as a result, Long's and, and work... And please don't, don't think it's about five. That's nothing mm -hmm. to do with yeah, the number exactly. five. Mm -hmm, exactly. As a result, Long's work benefited only a handful of patients, a few of patients, whereas Martin's work benefited the role at large. Mm -hmm. Okay, who wants to read the next paragraph on this year? I can read again. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Paul Jackson suggested use of Ethan Martin, and he also gave Martin helpful advice on how to administer Ether to patients. On the other hand, Jackson himself never made any significant use of Ether in a surgical operation. Nor, prior to Martin's successful demonstration, did Jackson make any attempt to inform the medical world of what he did, what he what he did know about it. It was Martin, not Jackson, who reached his reputation by making a public demonstration. If Gilbert Abbott had died on the operation table, it seems exceedingly unlikely that Charles Jackson would have claimed any responsibility in mm -hmm. Thank you, I appreciate it. So just one point, I heard use, but actually it's use, right? You know, I know, but yeah, use of, right? Because it's a noun, yeah, yeah. but as a verb use, yeah. It's quite difficult sometimes to uh, distinguish. So Charles Jackson suggested the use of ether to Martin. And he also gave Martin helpful advice on how to administer the... Again, uh, I guess this is ad administer, right? Because it's a verb. Let's check the pronunciation. Administer, not administer. Because administer, yeah, administer, you see? Administer as a verb. This, this is I was just about to go check, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not administer, not that. But as a verb, administration, the stress should be on the first syllable. Administration. Uh, wait, again, administration, hmm, not administration. Wow, okay, this is an exception. Exception. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. okay. So this is an exception, but most likely nouns is like that this is on the first of like uh, conflict, but to conflict, right? Conflict to conflict, a conflict, but to conflict is like that. So to administer, um, So, sorry, Charles Jackson suggested the use of ether to Martin, and he also gave Martin helpful advice on how to administer ether to patients. Again, to give ether to patients. On the other hand, Jackson himself never made any significant use of ether in a surgical operation, nor prior to Martin's successful demonstration did Jackson many a make any attempt to inform the medical world of what he did know about ether. Inform the world, notify the world, or um, I guess uh, give information um, to the world. So make aware. 
<laughs> make aware is better, of course. <laughs> Thank you. So, nor prior to Martin's successful demonstration, did Jackson make any attempt to inform the medical world of what he did know about Ether. It was Martin, not Jackson, who risked his reputation by making a public demonstration. If Gilbert Abbott had died on the operating table, it seemed exceedingly or extremely uh, unlikely that Charles T. Jackson would have claimed any responsibility for the demonstration. So exceedingly is like extremely here from, from what I know, because exceed, exceed is different, it may be different to a very great degree, extremely, right? Extremely. He was clever, handsome, and exceedingly rich. But exceed, you all know, means to, we had to pass something to greater than a number of amount. Kind of relative, but Okay, so if Gilbert Abbott had died on the operating table, it seems extremely unlikely that Charles T. Jackson would have claimed any responsibility for the demonstration. Okay, um, who wants to read the next paragraph? And this is the last page, yeah, uh, the last two paragraphs. So who wants to read the next paragraph starting from here? Um, I can go. Go ahead. Uh, where does William Morton belong on this list? An apt comparison could be made between Morton and Joseph Lister, but were medical men. Both are famous for introducing a new technique or pro procedure that revo um, revolutionized surgery and childbearing. Both of two innovations seem, in um, hindsight, to have been fairly obvious, neither man was actually the first to employ the technique or procedure which was publicized, pub, um, publicized and popularized through his efforts, and each must share the credit for his innovation with others. I have ranked Morton higher than Lister, principally because I believe that in the long run the introduction of anesthesia was a more important development than the introduction of antiseptic and antiseptic surgery. After all, to some extent, modern modern antibiotics can anti antibiotics can substitute for the lack of antiseptic measures measures during surgery. Without anesthesia, delicate or prolonged operations were not feasible and even simple operations were often avoided until it was too late for them to be of help mm -hmm. thank you i appreciate it um yeah just a few words i guess it was like i heard like famous but famous right famous and hindsight and child bearing not bearing publicized right publicized procedure right um, yeah, and uh, mm -hmm. anesthesia, right? Okay, let's review. Where does William Martin belong on this list? An opt comparison could be made between Martin and Joseph Lister. Up, we had this one. Uh, it was opt, right? It was the pronunciation or apt. I kind of forgot it was apt or opt. Um, apt. means. Apt, uh -huh. uh, uh, yeah, apt, okay, it's apt, it uh, means proper, means like uh, apt, uh, yeah, suitable or right for a particular situation, proper, suitable, an apt comment or description, mm, apt, exactly, okay. But what, uh -huh, that was opt, option, uh -huh, means to select, to choose, mm, this is opt, mm, to make a choice, mm, to choose. So, but this is apt, means suitable, an apt comparison could be comparison could be made between Martin and Joseph Lister. Both were medical men. Both are famous for introducing a new technique or procedure that revolutionized surgery and childbearing. Childbearing is like uh, giving birth, uh, birth to, to a child. The process of, of or fact of having babies, mm -hmm. yeah, giving birth. For example, how does childbearing affect women's incomes? Okay, um, again, both are famous for introdu introducing 
a new technique or procedure that revolutionized surgery and childbearing. Both of the innovations seem in hindsight, hindsight, mm, in hindsight to have been fairly obvious. I guess understanding from what I remember, but I'm not sure. The ability to understand an event or situation only after it has happened. Uh huh. Yeah. For example, in hindsight, and this, yeah, in hindsight, it would have been better to wait, right? It's like, mm, uh, the ability to understanding. Mm, it's like, but here, what can be the same? Say so it would have been better to wait. It's like. Or this one, with hindsight, I should have taken the job. Kind of makes sense, like with understanding, with thinking. Uh, it's like, does anyone can can anyone explain more? Like comprehension. Yeah, but so, here, um, what you can replace, for example, instead of saying in hindsight, it would have been better to wait. What you can okay. say as an alternative. So, so there is a saying that. Uh, it goes like this: uh, hindsight is twenty twenty. So twenty twenty is you know having normal vision, right? Meaning you don't need uh you don't need spectacles, right? You don't need glasses, mm -hmm. right? So hindsight is always twenty twenty. Means when you look back, it's always clear. Of course, of course, I should have gone to the United States. Why did I stay in this country? You know, it's so clear. It's so obvious. Uh -huh. So that's why you say with the benefit of wisdom of looking back. Uh -huh, so it's nothing to do with back. understanding. Yeah, it's more like you look back and it's like, of course, of course, I should have taken the left road instead of the right road. Why did I go into the traffic jam? I'm so dumb. Of course, you know, it's so uh -huh. obvious. But before then, when you had to make the choice whether to turn left or to turn right or to go to the United States or to stay in your country, it was not clear, right? Mm -hmm. So you take yeah. the risk, right? Mm. Mm, yeah or how so it was hindsight. done and how it might have been done better mm -hmm. yes because, yeah mm. so hindsight is kind of like oh you know of course it's so obvious mm. okay yeah it's like when you look at back it's like it's so obvious uh, yeah so in hindsight it would have been better to wait mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. okay thank you so, so let's um continue so both of the innovations seems in hindsight to have been fairly obvious Neither man was actually the first to employ the technique or procedure which was publicized and popularized, popular, sorry, popularized through his efforts. And each must share the credit for his in innovation with others. I have ranked Martin higher than Lister principally or mainly because I believe that in the long run, the introduction of anesthesia was a more important development than the introduction of F. Wait, this one? What kind of surgery are you, you know? Anti antiseptic? Antiseptic? Oh, it says, hmm, an antiseptic, a chemical used for preventing infection in an injury, especially by killing bacteria. bacteria. Uh, for example, antiseptic is used to sterilize the skin before giving an injection uh -huh. okay or many of the in ingredients for antiseptics comes from the rainforests uh -huh. okay hmm. and also as an agent completely free from infectious mm -hmm. uh, antiseptic surgery mm -hmm. okay and too clean and showing no imagination and character but it's disapproving an antiseptic feeling. Okay, interesting. A chemical used yeah. to prevent infection from. Sorry, what? Septic have a meaning, yeah. I guess. Uh, could you repeat again? Septic itself. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Septic? Yes, on its own. Uh -huh. Septic. If you were to uh -huh. get a septic uh -huh. wound. Uh -huh. If you were to get a septic uh -huh. wound, that's serious because that could mean you could get an amputation of a limb that has a septic womb wound uh -huh. okay um my connection is good or or not 
Uh, I also brought this up, I think probably a month ago, when I said uh, sepsis, meaning the bacteria has already entered your bloodstream. So it's too late, you know. And we, we, want, we try not to do that in surgery. I'm not a doctor, but, you know, we try not to let the bacteria enter your bloodstream in large amounts or it will go to places it shouldn't go and then you have trouble like amputation, you know. Mm -hmm. Sepsis, yep. S-E-P-S-I-S. -I -S. So, mm, okay, uh, it's like S-I-S. Mm -hmm. S-C-V-R medical condition which bacteria enter the blood after an operation or accident. Mm -hmm. Sepsis. Mm -hmm. It's like a medical condition and it's a noun. Septic is the adjective infected by bacteria that uh, produce pus. I don't know this one. So, medical again. Thickial is liquid that forms in and comes from an infected cord or injury in the body. Uh huh. Pus, okay. Hmm. A pus filled wound. So, for example, I had my ears pierced and one of them went septic. Hmm, okay. And antiseptic uh, now makes sense. A chemical used for preventing infection in an injury, especially by killing bacteria. Okay, and uh, let's go back. So antiseptic surgery, again, here is an adjective, uh, completely clean from uh, infection or uh, bacteria, right? So again, it says, I believe that in the long run, the introduction of anesthesia was a more important development than the introduction of antiseptic surgery, antiseptic surgery. After all, to some extent, modern antibiotics can substitute for the lack of antiseptic measures during surgery. Antibiotics, antibiotics you all know, is kind of medicine, right? A medicine or a chemical that can destroy harmful bacteria in the body or limit their growth. I'm taking antibiotics for a throat anti infection. Antibiotics or antibiotics? Antibiotics, yeah. Antibiotic, okay. So I thought you've been to your doctor. Mm -hmm. I thought you've been to the doctor a few times. He must have prescribed you some antibiotics before, don't he? Sorry, yeah, actually. but in my country we say an antibiotic. It's like that. Oh no! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, after all, to some extent, modern anti or antibiotics can substitute for the lack of an antiseptic measures during surgery. Without anesthesia, delicate or prolonged operations were not feasible or practical. Delicate, careful. Uh, and even simple operations were often avoided until it was too late for them. Okay, interesting. Uh, so who wants to read the last paragraph? Uh, and also until here. Can I? Go ahead. The uh, the public demonstration of a practical means of anesthesia that Morton gave on that October morning in 1846 is one of the great dividing points in human history. Perhaps nothing sums up Morton's achievements better than the inscription on his mon monuments. Real, uh, William T. H. Morton, inventor and revealer of anesthetic inhalation, by whom pain and surgery was averted and annealed, before whom surgery was at all times agony, since whom science has control of pain. Mm -hmm. Thank you, appreciate it. So let's review the public demonstration of a practical means of anesthesia that Martin gave on that October morning in 1846 is one of the great dividing points in human history or turning points, you can say. Perhaps nothing sums up Marlin's achievement better than the inscription on his monument. Sums up, summarize. Uh, it's very common. Right? Uh, yeah, when a judge sums up towards the end of uh, trial also, he or she makes a speech to the jury telling them again of the main matters they should consider in the case. Or, wait, 
Are you sure? Just that? But it's like a summary. It's like just you want to summarize. So perhaps nothing sums up Marley's achievement better than the inscription on his monument. Inscription, we had this a lot of the verb is inscribed, right? Um, you write something on the stone, right? Words that are written or cut in something on the stone, on the wood. The inscription, read uh, this one. Or the inscriptions on the gravestones were worn away. Mm -hmm. And inscribe, I guess it was the verb, right? Mm -hmm. To write words in a book or crave. Or crave them on an object, right? It means cut them. Mm -hmm. Inscribe. So, perhaps uh, nothing uh, sums uh. up. Okay. Carve? Wow, wait, you're right. Yeah, yeah, carve. Mm -hmm. Carve, but that one was curve. Uh -huh. That one was this one. Okay, sorry. Yeah, this is curve, but this is carve. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, maybe I should add it to Anki. So, yeah, perhaps nothing sums up Martin's achievement better than the inscription on his monument. And monument, we all know, right? It's like a it's landmark. Um, Uh, I can show you the image also. Let me show you the image. These are monuments, right? You can see a landmark, a statue, building, or other structure erected to uh, commemorate a famous or notable person. Even commemorate to respect them, to um, to show respect for them. Okay. Mm. Uh, yeah. Let's see this inscription. William T. J. Martin, inventor and revealer of anesthetic inhalation. Inhalation when you inhale, it's like you breathe when you exhale to is the opposite. The action of breathing air, right? Smoke or gas into your lungs. Inhale. Uh, and exhale is the opposite of that, right? Is to send air out of your lungs. So inhale and exhale. So anesthetic inhalation is the noun for inhale by whom pain in surgery was averted and annulled, I guess. Averted means was mm, kind of, you know, turned away, you can say. Avoided. Was, uh, prevented, avoided. Yeah, it's prevented, yeah. To prevent something bad from happening. For example, to avert a crisis, conflict, strike, or famine. To avert disaster, economic collapse, for example. Mm -hmm. It's like to prevent. Mm -hmm. And... And this one, I don't know. It's like a no. It should be like a no. that. A no. So the, uh -huh. you know, no, like in programming, no, right? No value. Uh -huh, so no, a no. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. To officially announce that something such as a law, agreement, or marriage no longer is, exists. Uh -huh. But here is for uh, pain in surgery no longer is, exists. Mm -hmm. Another synonym. Yeah, just that. Okay. An annulment is the noun in law. You will need a court hearing to get an annulment. It's like a, uh -huh. yeah. Um, so in yeah, my okay. country, you can annul a marriage only two years after your marriage is registered. Mm -hmm. uh, after two years, you need a lawyer to file uh -huh. for a divorce. Remember a petition? Remember we learned that petition? The petition uh -huh. for yeah, divorce. Petition. Mm -hmm. petition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in my exactly. in my country, like a document. yeah, in my country, once you register for marriage, uh, doesn't matter your wedding, right? Of course, you register for, to be married, and once you're officially married, uh, you have two years to annul it, which after two years has passed, you must divorce. You must file for divorce. Mm -hmm. That's yep. that's the difference. So when you annul something, you are like it's like cancel, you know. Like, you know, when you're copying files, cancel, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when you cancel, the marriage has never happened. Like, Indeed. you you guys are not divorced. You guys are just not married. You canceled your marriage. You regret. Yeah, so you that's, that's so marriage. good. That, that's, yeah. that's, yeah. Yes. So option. there's no yeah. divorce lawyer. There's no divorce fees. There's no going to court. There's no, you sign this, I sign that, you know. It's just, we go our way. You know, it's like a breakup, mm -hmm. you know. It's, it's not as easy as a breakup, but it's not as bad as a divorce. A divorce is more serious mm -hmm. in my country. Yeah. So look up okay. what's in your country. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So your yeah, annulled kind of cancelled or. Mm -hmm. 
again dictionaries yeah. uh, was saying to official so when you divorce law, no so when you have divorced it. you are now formally divorced you cannot say you can you have not been married you still be lying yeah mm. because you yeah. have been married yeah mm -hmm. okay before whom surgery was at all times agony i don't know this one also it's like agony hmm. agony hmm extreme physical or mental pain or suffering uh-huh i guess i heard it but i kind of forgot she lay there screaming in agony in mental screaming. pain or suffering uh -huh. i was in an agony of suspense mm -hmm. we've both suffered agonies of guilt over what happened or it was the agony for them to say goodbye mm -hmm. okay we, we learned this in we learned this in collocation before about newspapers uh aunt agony yeah i Olive, heard I it yeah. mm -hmm. i heard it but i kind of forgot that mm -hmm. okay so yeah before whom sergio was at all times agony means extreme physical or mental mental pain since whom science has control of pain mm -hmm. such a great uh, work and this image says with this glass container martin first Admis, uh, administered sulfuric ether to a patient in 1846. I guess sulfuric, right? Or wait, sulf, wait, sulfuric is like that. Sulfuric, sulfuric, hmm. sulfuric acid, mm -hmm. acid. Okay. Again, it's different in my country. So with this glass container, Martin first administered sulfuric ether to a patient in 1846 okay with this glass container hmm. yeah in that image also it was like that right yeah i guess this is the cl glass container i'm not sure hmm. okay thank you very much everybody um it was about william t j martin uh, a scientist or a physician you can say a doctor